We welcome you to another Good News broadcast. Just get yourself comfortable and enjoy the music and the Word of God and uh, forget about the troubles around you and focus on what God can do. Brother Joseph Dockery is with us tonight. Sister Judy is on the telephones. Brother Tim uh, and them is here tonight. Brother Bob, Brother Jack, Brother Glenn. So we're here to just have a good time in the Lord. And uh, I pray that you've had a blessed holidays. I pray that this year will be a blessed year for you. And God's been good to us. Thank each one of you for your uh, concern and your uh, compliments uh, about my surgery. It, it did go well. Uh, not fully recovered yet, but I'm doing well. And I thank you for your prayers. I thank you for everything that you have done in the years past. And I thank God for what he's going to do in the time to come. We just want to be in God's will and do his work. So uh, we're going to ask you that if you would, uh, that you would pray for Jewel Hardest and her and Carolyn. Uh, also pray for Peggy Church and her family. Uh, pray for Anne from, uh, for, ha for health problems. Uh, Jane needs prayer. And Don and Peggy needs prayer. So we're going to let these gentlemen bless you in a song. Go ahead, gentlemen. When the world has turned you down And a true friend can be found And your body's been beneath the toll and pain When your load is hard to bear And it seems there's none to care You'll find relief when you kneel and call his name It's alright, it's alright His name I call. It's all right, it's all right. I will never fear the night. It's all right when I talk with the Lord. When my steps are getting slow and it's time for me to go, and no Satan tries to say my prayers are vain. When I cross. Be alright, oh the Lord will call my name. It's alright, it's alright. Through the storm he'll give me light. He will answer when upon his name I call. It's alright, it's alright. I will never fear the night. It's alright when I talk. Good to have a talk with the Lord. We have Sister Judy on the telephone, so she be sure and call in your prayer request. And uh, I don't know what you come expecting, but I come to expect to have a good time in the Lord. God is so good, isn't he? We ask you to pray for Louise from down in China Grove. Nancy needs prayer for health, and also remember to pray for her eyes. Uh, Cora... And uh, asked us to pray for recovering from a stroke. She's recovering from a stroke. It happened over the holidays. So let's remember her in prayer. Uh, Brenda and her family needs prayer from down in Albemarle. So we ask you to remember them in prayer. And as always, uh, Sister Jeannie and Robert uh, needs our prayers. And they appreciate the prayers that's prayed, and uh, God is the one who gives them strength to go on. It's such a blessed time, isn't it? Isn't God good? Yes, He is. We're going to let them bring you another song. Go ahead, gentlemen. There's come in a day when no heart aches will come, no more cloud in the sky. No more tears to fill the eye But they will be When my Jesus 
day. You know, we just got through celebrating Christmas, and um, I hope that most people uh, truly realize this, what Christmas is really all about. I know it's a time of giving and sharing, and I guess one of the greatest gifts that could ever have been given was the gift of a Savior to this world. We need to think just how much God loves us, that He sent His Son into this world, not to condemn the world, but the world through Him might be saved. What a wonderful gift, the gift of salvation. We ask you that, if you would, to remember Sylvia Warlick. Uh, she has the 85th birthday, and we want to send a song out to her, and these came in last Saturday. A uh, prayer for Robert, a uh, prayer for Ruth Reed, a uh, hospital, a uh, broke hip. God bless you, Ruth. May he heal you and be with you. Dolores from Indian Land needs prayer. Also pray for Betty Rogers. And also prayer for Janice Hoover. So let's remember these dear folks in prayer. Go ahead, Brother Tim, and bless us in a song. I used to be a beggar. I had no silver or gold. My house was just a cabin. My clothes. But one day I went to an altar, I bowed on my knees in prayer. Jesus reached down and touched me when I came up a millionaire. Oh, I went down a beggar, 
feel the same But God is preparing a city I'm laying my treasures up there One day I'm going to claim them When I move to that city for square Oh, I went down the bigger But I came up a millionaire Jesus gave me a mansion On a golden square He gave me a beautiful robe of white A crown of jewels to wear oh, I went down a beggar But I came up a millionaire Yes, I went down a beggar But I came up a millionaire Remember still to pray for Betty Rogers uh, pray for Doris Britton, and she is thankful for 80 years of God taking care of her. God takes care of his own, don't he? He takes care of all of us. But isn't it wonderful to give him recognition and, uh, and praise and honor and glory for what he's done through our lives? Dear friend of ours from down in Conover, Miss Hazel, and her sister Carolyn needs our prayers. And also pray for James Byers and his wife and pray for uh, her son, uh, Dave. Special prayer requests and a song for Peggy Webb and also Susie Benfield. Special prayer for Ronnie Clark who has cancer. Prayer for Brenda Mitchell, Scott. Prayer for Rick and Linda Clark and Nikki. Prayer for Ruth Reed and Alta, Alta Clark, Herschel Reed, Frankie Reed, and Melissa, and Lola Turberville. So let's remember these precious folks in your prayers. We're going to pray later on in the program. Go ahead, gentlemen, and bring us a song. When my Savior calls, I will land. When he calls,
we don't have to worry. He knows our name. He knows all about us. He knows what we have need of. He knows when we're down. He knows when we're up. He knows when we're sick. He knows when we're well. But God's good, isn't he? Amen. Prayer for Billy Henderson. He needs prayer for healing of eyes. And he wanted to hear the song, Rose Without a Thorn. And I believe Brother Dallas sang that song, and he's not here to this week. He'll be here next week. Ivanel Hicks and Jean Curtsy and, uh, needs prayer. Uh, Curtis uh, Peak wants a birthday song. Happy birthday, Curtis. Prayer for Linda Neal, who is sick, and we want to send a song out to her. Prayer for Margie Green. She had surgery, and we want to send a song out to her also. Prayer for Larry Gibson. He's having test runs, so we pray that they will be normal. Uh, Nathan Williams is sick, and Gene Williams, we need to pray for them. And also, we want to wish Nixon a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Nixon. And uh, we just want to send this next song out to all of our blessed sponsors and those who watch the broadcast. We are so precious, and we appreciate you, and we love you. Go ahead, gentlemen. The Lord told Joshua to go to Jericho and to march seven times around. He followed faithfully, obeyed the Lord's command, and the walls came tumbling down. Then the walls came tumbling down. Joshua marched seven We all have walls around our lives sometimes. You know, walls separate. There's different types of walls. But when the walls of term, turmoil and trouble and heartache and sorrow and loneliness and depression and sickness come down, don't it feel good to be set free and be at liberty? God knows what you have need of tonight. If there's a wall in your life that's hindering you from being blessed of God, distrust God. God told Joshua to march around the walls seven times. That sounds foolish, doesn't it? But God uses the foolish things, the simple things to confound the wise. And he can take down the wall in your life that has separated you from his great love and mercy and, and all. We want Brother Tim and them to go ahead and bless us in another song. Go ahead, gentlemen.
Once again, let me say God bless you and thank every one of you who have contributed, who contributes to this broadcast. Because if it have not been for you, we would never have been able to be here. But we're here because of you, because of your love for the Lord, because you were willing to sacrifice when times was hard. And we appreciate everything that you do for the Lord. We appreciate your prayers. I appreciate your prayers and your comments and your concerns. And we pray every day for you. These are the ones who have given on the broadcast this week. We have Violet from Rockingham, Billy Ray from North Wilkesboro, Mr. and Mrs. Delancey from Newton, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, uh, Carol from Mint Hill, North Carolina, Peggy from Lenore, William and Elizabeth from Charlotte, Anna from Rockingham, Linda and Lee from Morganton, uh, William Dale from Mooresboro, North Carolina, Jane from Morganton, Patty from Morganton, Dorothy from over in Norwood, North Carolina, uh, Jewel from Mint Hill, uh, Grady and Judy from Hickory, Ronald and Peggy from Gastonia, Bill and Louise from China Grove, then we have uh, Nancy from Wadesboro, uh, Cora from Collettsville, North Carolina, uh, Helen from Lincolnton, Anne from Mount Holly, Brenda from Albemarle, Jeannie and Robert from down in Monroe, and we have uh, Bobby and Sissy from up in Morganton. God bless you folks for what you do to make it possible for this program to continue. Brother Joe's going to be joining me here in a few minutes. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to go into the Word. But we need special prayer for Daryl Fielding. Uh, I want to send a birthday song out to him. A prayer for the Sharp family over in Olin, North Carolina. Judy, we're praying for you. God bless you. I know it's hard, and uh, we just ask God to put his hand upon you and strengthen you. Prayer for Linda, uh, Roger, a prayer and a song for Tim and Wendy Sweet, uh, pastor, for, let's see, pastor for Ed Warren, had surgery. Uh, Prayer for Faith Temple Church in Morganton. Virgie Mungo, a song. Uh, 
some glad morning when this life is over. And prayer for Crystal Wright, who is having tests, and they've requested that Tim sing, I Believe. Uh, pray for James Miller, he's having surgery. Prayer and love to Lonnie and Donna. We do uh, miss Lonnie and Donnie and Cindy, and we just, our prayers are with them. Uh, prayer for Judy Stinnett, uh, and a song, Power in the Blood. Uh, Judy's having trouble, I think, with her feet. Uh, pray for Christine and John for their health also. Brother Tim, y'all go ahead and bless these dear folks with a song. Crying on into the Lord. We want to go to God in prayer and ask the Lord to touch you. I pray that God's will will be done. I'm expecting to hear something good has happened. Oh, what a wonderful Savior we have. Oh, thank God that He saw mankind and knew what we all had need of. He loved us. Why do you think we are here today? Some of us have lived a wonderful long life. Some don't live long lives. But still, every living human, God had a purpose for it. We know that the devil come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I'm glad that Jesus came, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. How wonderful it's going to be when we get to heaven. Thank God for the sweet Holy Spirit. Oh my, what a wonderful, wonderful thing to know. And maybe I shouldn't say thing, but what a wonderful, wonderful blessing it is to know the Spirit of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Father of our Lord and Savior, the giver of life. Almighty God, we come to you today, and we ask you, Almighty God, that you would touch those tonight that are sick in their bodies. 
Lord, we know we have plagues that have come upon the earth. And even the, the, the innocent suffer from the sickness and the viruses and the diseases and the troubles and the cares of this world. But God, we thank you tonight that your grace is sufficient. We thank you, Father, for sending your Son, Jesus, into this world. And that he paid the price not only for our salvation, but for the healing of all sickness and of all diseases. We thank you, Lord, for the book of Hebrews, who has taught us about faith. And that faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. Oh, Father God, we know that some tonight may not be able to see and to understand and to know your spirit. But Lord, we're thankful tonight that we know your spirit and we know that things that we can't see, if we believe in our heart and doubt not, they will come to be reality. That's walking by faith and not by sight. Lord, I ask you to help those tonight, Lord, that are of little faith. Lord, that you would increase their faith and help them, Lord, to know and to trust and to believe in one who has all power in heaven and in earth. The power to speak to sickness and disease and plagues and troubles and sorrows and heartaches and to know that he is the divine healer and deliver of man's soul. Almighty God, may your Holy Spirit, Lord, touch those tonight, Lord, that are reaching out to you. And I pray, Almighty God, that as they stretch their hand forth toward this TV, Lord, that you will let your Spirit, Father, flow into their bodies, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Heal them, Lord, and supply their every need, Father, for we ask it to be done in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I want to talk to you tonight about a man. A man who was a Pharisee. You know, the Pharisees and seem to be righteous and they like to stand in the marketplaces and play, uh, pray loud prayers and to be noticed. Then there was the Sadducees and of course there was the Jews. But this particular man who was the Pharisee, his name was Nicodemus. Who was this man? What was his position on earth? What kind of person was he? He had a position. He was a ruler of the Jews. Well, what was it so special about this man, him being a Pharisee? He came to Jesus by night. He didn't want people to see him coming to this man that's called Jesus, this miracle worker and the healer. He didn't want to be numbered with one of them. But he came to Jesus by night. And he said unto him, unto Jesus, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Because no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. <laughs> oh, my Lord and my God, it's wonderful to know that we have God with us. He lives and abides in our heart. So Jesus answered unto this Pharisee, the Nicodemus, and this is what he said unto Nicodemus. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And you know we all are, have been spiritually blinded at one time. We saw and understood the things of nature, the natural things, the things of this world, material things. 
Some believe it's real, some believe it's not real. But seeing is believing. But that's not walking by faith. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things what? Not seen. We can't see the healing hand of God working in our bodies, but He does. And when He does, then we see the evidence. And later on, Jesus will be explaining about the Spirit of God and how that it comes and it works and you don't see it, but yet He compared it to the wind. You never see wind, it's transparent. But you see the evidence of what the wind does. But Jesus said unto Nicodemus, I say unto you, truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But here Nicodemus was, he had a mind of a carnal mind. He was spiritually blinded. He did not know that man was of natural and of spiritual. So he asked Jesus, he said, how can a man be born when he's old? Now he knew what birth was. He knew that the child had to come from the wound of the mother and come from the inside, and that's how birth took place. But Nicodemus says, when you're old, can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? But notice what Jesus said. Verily, verily, I say unto you, or unto thee, he said, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Then he goes on to tell Nicodemus, Nicodemus, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And Jesus was talking about spiritually birth, spiritual birth. How many today are, haven't been born again of the Spirit? By the water and of the Spirit. This is what the gospel was for. This is why we just memorated Christmas was because this was the time that God sent a gift to us, the gift of salvation. It came as a little babe wrapped in a swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. One who grew up and was rejected, but yet he obeyed his Father, his Heavenly Father. That which is born to flesh is flesh, Jesus told Nicodemus, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. He said, Now marvel not, Nicodemus, that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. And here he explains, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh or whether it goeth, so is even one that is born of the Spirit. We don't see the Spirit working in a man or in ourselves. But it was the Holy Spirit of God that came one day and convicted our hearts and caused us to realize that we were sinful and filthy and dirty and ungodly. Maybe we were searching for love. But it was the love of material things, the love of natural things. But our soul was crying out. It needed attention. It needed love. And God saw that in us. And His Spirit drew us to Jesus, the gift of salvation. The one whom He sent into this world, not to condemn the world, but the world through Him would be saved. Some people say, well, I'll get saved whenever I want to. When I get older, then I'll give my heart to the Lord. You don't know that. You know, we're taught that the Spirit of God will not always strive with man. 
We don't know how many times the Spirit of God may speak to your heart and, and bring conviction upon you and you know that you need to repent and pray. But you love this world. You love the sin. You love what the devil has planted out there. And you could fool around and wait till it's too late. And there may not be another call. But everybody's been given a call. They've been given a chance. And when that chance comes, when that opportunity comes, and the Spirit of God is dealing with you, then you need to get on your knees and pray and ask God to forgive you of your dirty, filthy, ungodly, nasty talking mouth, your ungodly actions, your filthiness. But God so loves you as you are. He died for you. He died because of the filth that you was in. Because he knew that that was a bondage. And that you weren't happy. Things weren't going right. But he reached down and touched you and washed you and cleansed you by the Spirit. And man couldn't see that. We couldn't see that. But we know that it was the Spirit of God that touched us. But see, the evidence of that Spirit... We quit cussing. We stopped drinking. We stopped whore hopping around. We stopped fornicating and committing idol adultery and, and sinful things that the laws of God teaches us not to do. Drinking, gambling. He took all of that away. We didn't see the Spirit, but it came. And it changed our lives. And as, as Paul said, we are a new creature in Christ Jesus. When He makes you new, you're new. I want to say tonight that God loves you. Jesus went on to teach with Nicodemus. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knoweth not these things? How could he know them? He wasn't born again. How do people know unless they're taught the Word? Well, if you don't go to church, you don't go to Sunday school, you don't learn about Jesus and the Godhead and how the God operates and how God works, you're not going to understand. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say, or very little I say unto you, or unto thee, Nicodemus, we speak that we do know, and testify we have seen, and, re and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? We must believe the Word of God. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Jesus. See, Nicodemus being affiliated with the law in Moses' time, Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Some people say, I have no hope. There's no chance for me. I, I, I've sinned so bad. I've done so, so much wrong. I, I don't think I can be saved. <clears throat> Excuse me. The only way you cannot be saved is when you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. When you call the Spirit of God a devil, don't do that. 
It's dangerous even to say to people who have the baptism in the Holy Ghost and speak in other tongues that that's of the devil. Don't never ever do that. You're in danger of hell fire. You're calling the Spirit of God a devil. You may not understand it, but keep your mouth shut. Whosoever believe in them should not perish, but have eternal life. We have an eternal life, a life, and that life is in the soul of man, and the soul of man lives on forever and ever and ever. It never dies. The soul of man never dies. But we do have a choice that we can live eternally throughout all the eternal ages with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and the heavenly host, and the angels of heaven, and our loved ones who've gone on before, if we're born again. But if we're not born again, we'll live in hell. We'll be cast into outer darkness where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And we'll hear the Master say one day, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Do you want to hear those words? Somebody say those words to you. Depart from me. And you're gone forever with that person. Separated eternally from your loved ones, from God and the heavenly host, in a place of torment, weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. And Nicodemus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let me ask you, do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe there is a God who created the heavens and the earth and all the things that we see in the natural? Can you deny that there's not a God? There is a God. God is a triune God. He's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And God so loved this world that He gave His only begotten Son, the second part of His triune, that whosoever believes in should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent His Son into the world, sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Oh, my friend, Jesus wants you to be saved tonight. If you're a hypocrite, God wants you to repent and be saved tonight. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You have to believe in Jesus. Do you believe in him tonight? And this is the condemnation. The light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And we're living in a world of evilness. People's deeds are evil, and the light is not shining too bright, I don't think. They can't see that light because their deeds are so evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth come to the light, that his deeds might be made manifest, that they are wroth in God. They're taken away. They're forgotten about. They're cast as far as the east is from the west, and never to be remembered against you anymore. I pray that you know Jesus as your Savior. I would have loved for Brother Joe to come, but he's over in the other part of the studio and gave you a word of testimony. But I want you to know you've got to recognize Jesus. He's our everything. He's the Son of God. He's the Redeemer of mankind. And not only that, 
but he is the healer. He paid the price. Before he even went to Calvary, he paid the price. He bore the stripes upon his body for the healing of all sickness and disease. And we must believe that with all of our heart. We have to believe in Jesus. He's the answer to your problems. He's the answer to your sickness and your troubles, your heartaches and sorrows. Again, do you know Him? Do you know Him as your Savior tonight? Do you know Him as your Redeemer, as your Healer, as your Deliverer? He came to set the captive free. He came to give sight unto the blind. He even raised the dead. Oh, but now, preacher, you're going a little bit too far, aren't you? But there are occasions that people have died and came back. Not everyone, but as God has chosen it to be that way because He is the resurrection of life. Brother Joe, you want to say a word for the Lord before we leave the broadcast? Yeah, I'd like to say that I'm thankful to be here tonight. I went to the doctor on the 14th. I always go every six months and give me a flu shot. The next morning I come down with the flu bath. Had it for about two weeks. Me and my wife both had it. And I thank God for each and every one of you that has prayed for me and always praying for me. I know that some of you pray daily for me and for him and for this program. And I thank God that God supplies a need. God's work done God's way will never let God supply. I have never been hungry since I gave my heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> When I was a little boy, I'd run around these hills and hollers and everywhere, and the one that was going to be my mother run off and left, and we didn't have nobody to cook, and Flay done, he was working, leave at 6 o'clock, and we'd get up, and no breakfast and no lunch at school, and we had a hard time. But you know, my father, I've never known a father but him. Yes. I've never had a father's love. And the first time I read that King James Version Bible, <laughs> the first promise that jumped out on into me, I'll never leave thee, son. I'll never forsake thee. Lo, I am with thee always, even unto the end of the world. Yes. And you know, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, I change not. We serve a great and mighty God, and we cannot comprehend the love of God that surpasses all understanding. It will keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. But I thank God I love everybody. I, love, I have a daughter that hates my guts, but you know I love her, and I get the best food for her mother to make every Saturday. And she comes up and walks her in front of me and won't speak and everything. But you know the Bible says, feed your enemies. They that do good to you, be good to them, but be good to your enemies too. I thank God that I can do that. You can if you got the love of God shed abroad in your heart by the sweet Holy Ghost. You can obey God's Word. God's Word is my life. I, just like Mo, God told Moses in the wilderness, I have brought you out of here in the wilderness to try you and to know you and to let you know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God doth man live. And that's true. If you live physically and you eat physical food, you're born again to the Spirit of God, you need spiritual food, and the Word of God is the Spirit of food. As newborn babes desire the sin sealed milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. That's what's wrong with the Christians, little Christians today. They are not being fed of the Word of God. And we thank God, and we're going to turn it back to you now. We'll let them go ahead and take us up with a song. 
We appreciate you. Thank you for everything that you do for the Good News program. Don't forget Jesus. He loves you. He wants you to be born again. Go ahead. So much to think. 